Hey guys, so we did a review on a car emergency slash bug out bag in Florida and I ended up having a wardrobe malfunction that we didn't notice for a bit and so that video was taken down and I need to do another review of that bag because it's a fantastic bag. Uh, so campingsurvival.com is who sent it to us. It is a small family business. It's not a corporation. It's not like a big Amazon store and it's an amazing bag. They did a really, really good job on it. This is how big it is. It is a bit heavy. The bag is very well made. We've had it, how long have we had it? We've had it for almost a year now. And none of the bag has ever frayed. It has lots of good pockets in it. And so I'll just go ahead and get started. Again, it's campingsurvival.com and it's Tom is the owner. And they do a giveaway once a month and they have all sorts of um, just, just fun uh, website challenges and, and information and, and then they do have the monthly giveaway. So I wanted to go through, you have your Mylar bag which holds heat in. They're very compact, they pack well and you can wrap yourself in and it, and it reflects all the heat back at you. Very standard. Uh, this I love. <laughs> um, wild cards, all age edible wild foods. Um, wild food ident identification card game. You do get bored if you're in an emergency situation, like if you're stuck in a car, broken down somewhere, and so having something to keep you entertained is important, but it also, this one shows you what you can eat in the area, which I thought was brilliant. Um, especially if you have kids, you do want something that will keep them entertained. Um, this is a solar wind-up radio, FM weather band, so that if you need to know about something that's happening in the area, you can chime in and find out what's happening. Um, it, it's more important than you would think if there was some kind of national type disaster. And um, I think that's a really, really good idea. Um, a lot of what's in here is the same as the, what I keep in my own personally curated uh, bug out survival bag. Uh, every time I reached into the bag when we first um, did the video, I was like, no way they, there's no way they have that. So they have um, oh, colloidal silver, which is, you know, a lot of people really swear by this for fighting viruses and infections of any kind. You do take it internally. Um, this is for boiling water or holding a canteen or you, you can cook with it. It is important to have something you can boil water in in your survival kit because you don't know if you're gonna be running out of some other form of water purification like iodine or a, or a, a straw or something like that. Having something you can actually use to boil things is important. Um, amoxicillin which is a form of, uh, what, what are they called, antibiotic that is from a pet store. And they don't necessarily recommend that you use this. I'm sure no doctor would recommend that you use this, but some people like to use some medications that have been rated at least not toxic to people. So um, we do keep anti, um, antibiotics in our emergency kit, but they are, uh, meant for humans, so do your own research on this one. But I do like that they have it in there. And then they have pulled pork. I like something like this a lot better than the MREs. The MREs have a tendency to bother my kid's stomach and you really don't want diarrhea on um, in an emergency situation. This is not a long-term emergency situation. This is just a bug out bag to get to and from. You want certain tools in it, certain things in it. And I think that something like this is a good is a good take on that. For me personally, since I can't eat any kind of grain, something like that would be really important to have. Um, this is a fishing rod. And so if you're in the right part of the country, I need to, sorry, I need to pull it back in. If you're in the right part of the country, there are still fish in the streams in our part of the country. There are uh, at certain times of year, and I know that fishing is a big deal in some of our these southern states that we're in. And so I thought this was really cool, a, a collapsible fishing rod. Um, silver gel. So it looks like this is more of the colloidal silver, but this one is used externally. 
which I, I personally, in my own personal family, I think that's kind of cool, cool thing to have. It might not necessarily be what I would choose for my kit as like a go-to first thing. I like to use um, tea tree oil and I really love um, uh, clay, bentonite clay for um, things like stings. Um, everybody has their own thing, but as far as like just a generic kit, would I open this up and be really excited to see that? I would be. It, it, I'm, I'm happy with everything that I'm seeing here. This one made me super happy. So this is iodine, let's see, how do you say it? Anti-radiation tablets. It's for your um, thyroid so that if there was any radiation, you would have something to take to block the radiation so it didn't give you um, thyroid cancer problems. Um, I think I got that right. So, I don't know. I, I think I think it's pretty neat. So, radiation um, sickness tablets. A big emergency uh, block. You have to be careful with some of these if you can't have grain. They're very high in fat. Obviously, you'd want it to be very high in fat. Um, and let's see, wheat flour, vegetable shortening, cane sugar, water, coconut, and salt. So for me and my family, this doesn't work, so we don't carry it in our pack, but, but for John, it works just fine. And this is the kit that he had when he was traveling. So here's the canteen. This fits in the canteen so that you're not taking up more space than you need to. In any emergency kit, you need some way to haul water, to carry water. Um, I like these. I also like something that's collapsible that can carry a couple gallons of water at a time. But again, this is a bug out bag. This isn't like a long-term survival kit type thing. This is just a bug out bag. Um, here's your life straw, which is very important. You want this because if you can't boil water and um, if you're in a situation where you need to get water and you need to get it quickly, the life straw can save your life because you're not getting all the nasties. Um, this takes out just about anything in your water. You do, of course, want to try and get it from a, a source that is as clean as possible. But um, if you don't really have a choice, this will keep you from getting dysentery and <laughs> all sorts of nasty cholera. I mean, it, it, it can really literally save your life. So we have one of these that's much bigger to supply our whole family. Plus we have one of these in each of our emergency kits. Thank you, Mr. The Kid, for that. Um, before that, we had lots of water storage. We had our hand pump and we had iodine tablets and that kind of thing. But um, these are way better. Uh, the Tabasco sauce is in holistic medicine, supposed to help with a heart attack. That's my understanding. Um, that uh, vinegar, a shot of like vinegar and really hot pepper can help with a heart attack. That's what I've heard. Again, do your research. This one is processed cheese. You'll notice everything that's in here is high in fat. In an emergency situation, you are not on a diet. You are eating as much as you can when it's available. And um, one thing with these tins is that when you open it, you do need to eat it at the time. You're not gonna be saving it. Anything inside this tin needs to be refrigerated after opening. Um, whereas with um, this block, it doesn't need refrigerated. You can just break off a chunk and eat it. But with these tins, once you open them, you need to eat them. You don't wanna be getting sick from food poisoning. So this one, this one, they get opened immediately. Uh, well, they don't get open immediately. They get open whenever you need them, but you eat them all at that time. This one is a first aid kit, and you can see we haven't even opened it yet. Darn it. We haven't had any car emergencies. We keep these in our cars. Um, I wish there was a knife in here. Let's see if they have a knife. Because I think that is one thing that people really forget about, that and gloves. Here is a survival medicine handbook for if anything goes wrong. Volcano preparedness, tornado preparedness, very fantastic. Anyway, so uh, hygiene type issues are a big deal in national or even local emergencies. So having something like this that explains how to diagnose and treat some of these things especially parasites, um, can be helpful. And then here we have a surgical kit. And I don't know if this is has the autoclave in it, but um, let's see. An autoclave kit where you can put um, the kit inside a pressure canner and sterilize everything is really nice. But this is, this is really nice, you want this. And hopefully it would have instructions in it, I would wonder if this one would have the instru instructions in it that would give you how to make sutures. Yeah, so it looks like this one has um, 
instructions on that kind of thing, which I think is good. So let's see if I can get to my other pockets. Um, more, uh, more radiation, sickness, medication, chlorofloc, water purification. I do believe that you don't want to rely on just one form of purification for your water. You could run out of one. Um, and so I, I think it is a good idea to have multiple, multiple layers of protection. Good flashlight. Oh, this one doesn't do that. Good flashlight. I do like to carry extra batteries with me, but that's just me. Or to have one that is the wind up. Um, here's the instructions for the solar powered radio. So I'll leave those in there. Anything you leave in here, I like to keep in, a, in plastic bags. I will take things out of my emergency kit. Something, I do like this emergency kit, by the way. Um, but I like to um, package everything in my emergency kit in plastic bags. And the reason for that is that if you got wet, um, if the things got wet, your, um, all your things would be protected and not be getting wet and dissolving. Also, if you have clothes, which I keep clothes in my emergency kit, um, you don't want those to be wet when you need them. You want them to be dry. Okay, so here's a one-hand sparker to start fires. And then a stuff bag, you can put clothes and things in it. It is water repellent. A flare, always important. Um, this looks like another flare. And then this looks like a solar powered um, floating. Uh, it, I think it alerts people to where you are, I think, kind of like a flare. And it's solar powered, which I think is really neat. The one thing I think I'm missing is a knife and maybe gloves. But it would be hard with gloves to know what size to give people. I, but I do think that rope, a knife, and gloves are missing out of this pack. And I almost wonder if they're actually missing out of this pack because I can't imagine that they would leave something like that out. Um, so I would bet that John has those wandering around somewhere separate from the pack. Um, because I remember it being more complete than this. So I wonder if John in his emergency kit, searching for things in the car, if he took out the gloves, the knife and the piece of rope. Cause again, I'm not seeing them and I believe I saw them before, but anybody who has an emergency kit knows that sometimes you use things. Okay. So if you go to their website, um, it is, um, their website is campingsurvival.com. And again, they do give a monthly giveaway, but I'm somebody who kind of over preps. This is meant to be a bug out bag, not a long-term survival thing. And I'm always thinking just a little bit too far ahead. Uh, I also like to have toilet paper. So I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of wondering if maybe John has gone through this kit and that we didn't put everything in. Cause I know we were carrying two different emergency kits in the same car and some things transferred from one to the other. So I guess I should rephrase that. I would put toilet paper. Anyway, I, every emergency kit is individual. A good basic kit is a good thing to have and then you add little things to it that make it better for your situation. So I would recommend finding the things that you think are the most important and adding them to the kit rather than looking at saying, why doesn't it have X, Y, and Z? Um, instead look at it and say, is this a good basic kit and what could I add to it to make it more personalized for my needs? So uh, go check them out and um, we'll talk to you later. So you guys know that we have traveled all over the country. Uh, this last year we were all the way down to Florida and all the way back and up into um, Missouri and then down in New Mexico. I mean, we were everywhere. And what we always made sure to have with us was an emergency kit, bug out bag, car kit, just so that if you get stranded on the road, you have basic, um, I wouldn't say comfortable, but basic survival things that if you were in a dire situation and you were you were stuck there for a while you would have some basic tools and so that's what this bag is for and because I have children this bag doesn't work so well for me but it works really well for John um, 
Uh, John is away from home more than we are whenever I'm out. I have kids with me and so my emergency kit, my bug out bag, is about three times the size because I have two more people that I need to be taking care of and kids have some special needs that are not the same as what a full grown man would, would have. And so um, I think this is a really good basic, basic kit. If you're gonna have these kits, I think you need to have one for each person in your family and not just one for the whole family. Uh, again, mine is more of a hiking pack that's three times this size. And I'm not necessarily planning on, you know, hiking out with it somewhere, but I have it in my car and the car carries it. So it's not a real big deal. Um, so if you're gonna have an emergency kit, I think you need one that's either big enough to hold everything for your whole family or individual kits. In our car, we actually do have three kits, one for each of the girls and one for me. And mine holds the heavier things and just call me crazy. But when you travel as much as we do, it's really important to me that we have things to make us comfortable. A lot of times what we end up doing is if we're at a friend's house and somebody gets into something they're allergic to, or um, I've done that before where I was at a friend's house eating and um, I got something in my eye, I'm really sensitive, and I ended up having to go and shower because whatever got in my eye got on me and I was allergic to all of it. And so I ended up going and showering at my friend's house and I had an extra set of clothes in my bug out bag. And so I didn't have to go home, I didn't have to borrow clothes, I just wore my own clothes out of my kit. Um, once when I was working, um, when the girls were really little, I was working at a gym and my car broke down on the side of the road. And I, it was winter and what I had was not warm enough for the weather. It had been warmer during the day, but it had chilled off at night and I didn't have my big coat with me. So I, I rummaged through my emergency kit and I pulled out my big wool sweater, put it on and I was able to walk home. I didn't have to wake my husband up. He had a big day the next day, so I didn't have to wake him up. I locked the car and I just walked home. Um, other things that we've had is that if we were out doing something and it turned out that there was no food in the local area or we hadn't packed enough food and the kids were hungry, we were able to search through our packs and we found our energy bars and we ate them and we quickly replaced them afterwards. But it was, it's a matter to me of just having some basics with you that can keep you comfortable, especially with kids. Um, so good pack. I think one person in the family should have a pack like this that's more medically uh, information rich. You know, something that has some medication in it, something that has some information in it. And then I think the rest of the packs can have, you know, a blanket, a set of clothes, a, a baseball cap, a, a card game, crayons. Um, but, but I do think the one pack needs to be really heavy on emergency type stuff, not just comfort things. So I hope you'll go check them out at campingsurvival.com and we'll talk to you later. Because I would never recommend a pack that didn't have a pocket knife in it. And the fact that I didn't see one in there, I was like, eh. But I was pretty sure I'd seen one when we first unpacked it. So I went back and looked at their website at their giveaway because this is the bag they do as their giveaway and it's worth $400, the bag complete. Um, and if it didn't have tools in it, it would not be a great deal because um, you need tools. So uh, it not only does it have a pocket knife, it also has a multi-tool like a Leatherman, which I think is essential.